Well, I don't see the point in waiting any longer. So let's bring her out. The star attraction, the one you came to see. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Miss Judy Gold. So, this is a very special episode of Kill Me Now because we're in front of a live audience! Woo! I am so excited. Hennessy is not even getting on my nerves right now. I can't even believe it. All right, well, welcome to this very special episode of Kill Me Now for the New York uh, Podcast Festival. Woo! Woo! I am Judy Gold, the host, the creator. I do everything. <laughs> Hennessy does nothing. I'm Hennessy's Hennessy. here. Let's have a hand for Hennessy, not oh, on voice oh, probation. I do nothing. I cannot believe. Thank you, thank you, thank you to Lisi Gorenson, Alicia, Linda Gorenson. Oh, you like Alicia? Lisi is fine. I know. I just did that to annoy you. But our guest today, oh, I, we love you. So, um, you know, uh, I, I just want to say um, I fucking hate you know who. Um, I, I, I I'm thinking of a kill me now moment. Um, I, I just think Lisi has a really good kill me now moment that she just told us about because you were at recently at the Knicks game. Oh yeah, only me. I was at the Knicks game, and now that this show that I'm on is doing well, I'm getting like perks like courtside seats. I've never had it. I used to have a scalper outside the garden for years and years and years. <laughs> and now and you're a big bas- basketball fan. Oh yeah, big huge basketball fan. I'm a Bulls fan, but I'll go to any basketball game. But I'm sitting courtside and it's the buzzer and I go down to get my bag and I just felt this incredible force just smack me in the face. <laughs> and it was a buzzer ball that was thrown like full court and just happened to just smack me in the face. <laughs> What's and the difference um, between a ball and a buzzer ball? A buzzer ball is like the fucking, bu- how like, do you not know this? <laughs> the buzzer is about to go off and they have to get the last shot in. I'm not They're that trying kind of to guy. get the last shot. Yeah. Like they always do it like from half court. It's like the, they, it's the mm-hmm, hardest mm-hmm. thrown ball of the game. Oh shit. Don't you think? Oh yeah, and this this was like the largest, it was the Pistons, and it was Drummond, who's like one of the larger players in the NBA. So, of course, that's when I stand up, and I almost do that like infant shot cry. Yeah. That's just like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But then I saw that there was the courtside photographer happened to be taking my picture right after I got smacked in the face. But and wait, you I saw that go, picture. You looked amazing. It, you didn't look like you got smacked in the face at all. I should all. get smacked in the face more often. Yes, yeah, but you it. didn't get on the Jumbotron before that? No, it was after I got smacked in the what face. Is, what, who else was at the game? Um, like Dakota Fanning or something. I don't know. <laughs> she was taking did up they the Jumbotron. Like, did they clap when they saw you on the Jumbotron? Yeah, they did. They did. But meanwhile, I was like... Probably had like a basketball sized right. welt on my face. Right. I mean, it was really. <laughs> and then what you got a little prize at the end. And then after the game, Drummond came up to me, and he's also not only one of the larger players in the NBA, but he's one of the more sweaty players. <laughs> and he took off his jersey and he threw it at me. And then he gave me, which was like, ugh, you know, it was just <laughs> dripping with sweat. And then he put his whole body around me and embraced me. And it was, I was just covered in his sweat. I don't so. get that. Like, I have a bit in my act about, like, you know, like at tennis matches, after they, you know, they take off their sweaty wristbands and throw it into the stands. And people, like, like what are you going to do with that? Like, what? It's so disgusting. Well, it's and filthy. then, of course, I, like, hand-washed it at home. You that did? I, you know, I took it home, and I got my special, like, wool light and hand-washed it. Why? Because you were afraid it was going to shrink? No, because it was disgusting. <laughs> It no, that was, was a joke because he's sweat. so big. Thanks so much for following along. I'm not doing podcasts, live podcasts at 3 o'clock in the fucking afternoon anymore. <laughs> I want to make sure everyone is wasted next time. Okay, go ahead. No, but then I was talking to this guy last night, and he's like, what do you mean you washed it? I was like, well, what was I supposed to do? And he's like, well, you just let it dry. Ew. And I'm like, and then what? And like, then, then it, ew, that's thing? disgusting. Like, make a pillow with exactly. it. Exactly. Wow. That's such a... <laughs> That's incredible. Okay. Well, I, you know, I don't want to monopolize the entire conversation with you know what. 
Oh, God. But I cannot believe, I, I want to thank you. you. I'm a fan of yours as a human being. Um, and I'm so, I'm so happy that you're like, this is so great for you, what's going on with Roseanne and everything. It really is. It's, we just got incredible ratings. Um, people are just know? responding to the show. I, I'm just totally super happy about it. It's awesome. Uh, and do, you never, in your wildest amount, I read that you said that you didn't even believe it was going to happen until you were like standing there on the set. Well, because you know how it is oh, in our please. business. They'll yeah. say it's happening, and then the last second, it something falls through or right. what have you. But and there had been talks about uh, starting Roseanne up for a long time. For I mean, like the year after it ended, everybody was like, right. "When's the reunion?" Right. Thanks. Thanks so much. Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, Roseanne, chill. So, um, <laughs> so what? All right. So you get to the. You get to the set. Is that when's the first time you saw everyone? Well, it's funny because everyone says, what was it like when you walked on the set again? You know, like it was almost like I was alone and it was some kind of like Judy Garland moment and the <laughs> right. lights went on. It was just me in the set. But there was like a camera crew. They were like, and Q, now go on the set. You know, right. So they could in. get your reaction. So they could get my reaction. And then... One of the oh, things that funny. was overwhelming is that, you know, most people have stayed in L.A. Um, for whatever, how many years it's been, 25 years, and I've been in New York. Right. So I walked and I saw so many people that I used to work with, crew, writers, this. It was just like all these familiar faces standing there. Right. Just like applauding, and I, it was just totally overwhelming. Whoa. Did you cry? No, I didn't cry. I mean, you know, so you. like and Q. Right, right, over there. right. And having an emotion, yeah. So authentic. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was pretty cool. And I was still super anxious about, you know, what the script was gonna be. Oh, you and didn't whether, say it before? No, no. Wow. And so I was like, this is great, but hopefully the writing doesn't suck. Right. And then when we all sat down together and we started reading the script, it was just like, we were all back, the writing was great, and it was just so, such a great feeling. It was really cool. Did you see the shuttle from Grand Central to, um, <laughs> to uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Times Square? I it's, did it. Um, it's the Roseanne set. Like, they put the quilt. Have you guys seen this? Yes. It's, it's the like ass, the right? subway car is the quilt, like you're sitting on the sofa. It, it's the there's entire... Also, there's also a bus... There's a few bus stations in the city that have a big Ro Roseanne ad, and Wait, they let's turned... let's do a couple Roseanne things. All right, there. They, they turned uh, the, um, the seat, the bench right there under the bus station <laughs> into the couch, and it's got the quilt on it. Okay, great. Thanks for um, bringing the conversation to <laughs> a complete halt. All right, sense. so... You credit, all right, you credited uh, Sarah Gilbert with, for making this happen. Yeah, she was the one that brought it all together. I guess John Goodman was on her show, The Talk. And um, they do you watch the talk? No, I don't. I can't with those shows anymore. I just it's like I don't. They're all the same on every channel. I mean, are they not the same? No, Sorry, they're Sarah. all the same, and they're all rich. And it's like, you know, they're talking about problems with their kids, and you know, and I'm like, you have a fucking nanny, okay? <laughs> you know, it's like, what problems do you have? You know, I mean, they have problems. I'm sure. All right, oh, sorry, but. <laughs> it's like I can't stand when rich people like sit around and are like. I mean, unless you're m miserable and rich. You know, like you have to have some misery and negativity in your life. Otherwise, I don't want to hear what the fuck you have to say. All right, so. Ms. Um, rich Bull. What? Ms. Rich Bull. Do, now, do you see what I have to deal with? Seriously. Like these, and I'm trying to be nice because it's live show, it's New York Podcast Festival. And really, you've like, you would be on VP already. <laughs> I'm not? No. <laughs> okay, so, um, uh, all right, so. Voice probation. Does everyone know that's voice probation? VP oh, means voice probation. I thought probation. you were all fans. I guess not. VP is voice probation. That's when Hennessy has to shut the fuck up. Okay, so. Um, okay, so Sarah Clark. 
Is that her name, Sarah Clark? <laughs> yeah, Who sure. Is Sarah Clark. <laughs> is that her name, Sarah Chake? Chake. Oh fuck. Sarah I, Chalk. Chalk. <laughs> Clark. That's I because Sarah I, Clark. That's where I grew up. Totally Clark. Totally Sarah, Sarah, Clark. Chake. Sarah Chake. So Chalk. Ch- Chalk. Chalk. Whatever the fuck her name is. Sarah. Yeah, who cares? The fake Becky. She okay. Sucks. Fuck you. All right. So, <laughs> Sarah, you you were the one who suggested. That she come that back. That she came back. Yeah. Not only did I give her an entire career by leaving the show. Right. I mean, but I actually, I was the one that wanted her to come back. Were they I mean, like, are you fucking crazy? What? She totally owes you. She owe at least a card every now and then. I know. Like what, was she, what was that like? Like, because I read that you, um, that people are always trying to pin you guys against each other. And you were like, uh-uh. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean... Why do that? You right. know what I mean? There's yeah. really no comparison. No. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's funny because she's, she's a cool lady. I never have watched a show when she was on, so, and that wasn't because, like, I was... Like, you know, why would you watch the show that you just left? Well, apparently people think that, like, you just, you're, like, married to the show right, forever right. and ever, and whatever they do, you know everything about it. You're, right, like, the right. expert, but... You know, I didn't have a TV after college, so I didn't watch any, I didn't watch like Seinfeld or, I know, or like The Simpsons. Oh, I know, sorry, but, so it wasn't personal towards right. that and show. And you didn't have a TV because you were like kind of over it. Because I was like, at that time I was like, screw the man, you know, like, <laughs> down I'm like with that the now. corporate yeah. man. Yeah. You know, I was young, basically right. I was a young person. Um, and you went to Vassar. You're I very brilliant. <laughs> well, math. I got math kicked geek. out. You got kicked out. Why? Yeah, well, I got I got a personal leave. For what? Well, I decided that I was going to major in bong hits and uh-huh. pool. I did bong hits and Ms. Pac-Man. Oh, really? Yeah, that was my we major. Had like a similar. Yeah, yeah. At least major. We yeah, had and major. I was really good. I could do. I knew the entire Ms. Pac. I could go like I really. And you're both musicians. You're both stony musicians. Yeah, you're a really good musician, though. How you really? How do you know that? Because I have it in my notes. Oh, okay. Mandolin and guitar. <laughs> Are we gonna start a band? Yeah, let's this? do that. How great would that be? That would be great. Yeah. Let's do it. All right, I'm in. I'll okay. tell you merch. <laughs> um, so you you did all right. So I, I'm. Th- this is my. Fa- so you all right. So had you met. Sarah Chalk Clark, whatever the fuck her name is. Um, Had you met her before? I met her because we did this kind of like Patty Duke episode where, because they they asked me to come back. I'm at college and I have like a million classes because I got kicked out. I'm trying to catch up. And they're like, hey, could you drop everything and come back out to L.A.? You know, that's kind of how they think. Like, right. oh, you have a life? Don't, you know, just throw all that away right. and just fly out to L.A. And I was kind of like, oh, can we work this out somehow? You know, because my roommate off campus was like flipping burgers on the Cape. And they offered me like a pretty decent amount of money. So I was like, well, she's, you know. Right. In comparison. I know, really. Flipping this burgers. This is a nice amount versus, of money. Yeah. So I tried to work it out. And they did this like, we're Becky's kind of thing. And so we met for like five minutes. Right. I remember a um, Halloween episode where it, I think you opened the door for some trick-or-treaters. And she was the mother of the trick-or-treaters. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't remember that. It's cool. You don't watch your own show. That's that would be weird. Is that true? It, yeah, it's true. Anyone remember that? Anyway, yeah, fuck you guys. <laughs> I know. Really, you're yeah, being dude. very unsupportive. I, I'm gonna put it on three o'clock on Shabbat. Okay, so. Um, that's the Jew bell for those of yeah. you who <laughs> don't know. Anything, anytime anything Jewish happens, we. Pl- I, I'm assuming they were, they're all listeners, but I guess I shouldn't. They're, okay. they're, they Look are at listeners the nodding no. Now. No, we're not. We've never heard of you. <laughs> who the hell are you? Why is it called Kill Me Now? I don't understand. Do you have happy socks? Are those happy socks? Yeah, I do too. I love happy socks. Mine say carpe the fuck out of this DM. Right today. <laughs> um, okay, so I also heard a story, oh, no. Lisey, that um, everyone kept saying to you, 
oh my god, you look exactly the same. Oh, like I haven't aged? Yeah. Yeah, people say that. You yeah. haven't. You uh, know why? Because I'm the only one who hasn't had any work done. Exactly. <laughs> yes. That's why I look the same. I swear to God. Exactly. Because I, I mean, I was like, everyone looks great. And I'm like, everyone looks great, but they don't look the same. Right. Yes. I look the same because... You don't yeah. have cat face. And you, look, you have, like, amazing skin. And you're, like, young face. You're cute. You're so cute. All right, so <laughs> Sarah Gilbert. I was looking at pictures of her. She's had stuff done, right? Has her no- she? Yeah. I don't. I mean, oh, come on. Her nose is different. I don't know. Yo, I, I used to have a crush on her face, all right. and now I don't. What? I used to have a crush on her face, and now I don't. That's all I'm saying. Really? Damn. You did? You had a crush on... Well, we're not going to talk about this. Now, either. did anyone have uh, sexual relations? Um... um of the cast members? Well, you mean with each other? Yeah. Well, I know Sarah Gilbert. It wasn't like the Brady Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just get But s- I, I, Sarah said that when she was going, what's his name? Galecki? G- oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I. That that's I was when surprised. she realized. She said that I was dating him, and that's when I realized I was gay. What a diss that is for him. That's kind of a diss. I mean, they're really still really good friends, yeah. so that's a little bizarre. I know. Um, <laughs> I dated Toby Maguire back you then. You did? Yeah. And he's How a big. Right? No, I'm kidding. And, um, you know, he was just a guy. Whatever he was, like 15 or something. Right. You did know you how do those anything? Guys are. Yeah. Well. Really? Yeah. That's <laughs> it. I'm not getting any more information. I mean, it's, it's that age. Can it really? I know. You don't even know what you're doing. And it's Toby McGuire. Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So but he was on the show for a hot like second. Right. And so is Leo DiCaprio. Oh, so. shut up! That's one of our. Th- you can't say all the. Oh. That's one of our games we're playing with the audience. Mm-hmm. We'll just scratch that. Question. All right. So you didn't hear that. Okay. Uh, guys. Well, well, right. well, they don't even know what the fuck's going on anyway. So I don't even know why I even care. You know. <laughs> How do your parents feel? Now, your father works for the EPA. He did. He's retired now. Okay. But. How does he feel about um, this, that it's, you know, four, 40 below zero and snow bombing in the middle of April? Does he, do you ever talk about the environment with him? And oh, does yeah. he love I mean, Scott Pruitt? Oh, my gosh. He, you know, the EPA is, you know, a pretty liberal. I mean, they're yeah. a bunch of science, liberal science nerds. Right, right, right. You know, and... My dad's friends, are, they're like kind of dorky, but they're like cool guys, too. Right, I mean, right. I think that's cool. Right. But I'm pretty sure that um, his branch, I'm from Chicago, his branch Because we is, can't tell by the accent. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think everyone's pretty horrified. I mean, they try to eliminate the EPA. Well, look at Scott Pruitt. He's I such a he fucking the EPA asshole. He's in charge of it. But he's like just, did you see all the money he spent? Like, he's paying, do you all know this? Scott Pruitt, the head of... Do you want under, know what's going on? Yes, yeah, lightly, because you talk about it. All right. I, I, this guy, <laughs> I can't fucking believe the shit. You know, he ha, he's paying um, $50 a night for this uh, one-bedroom apartment in D.C. because the, it's a lobbyist who he help, helped him and everything. He's such a fucking... Like, I fucking hate all of them. Like, I cannot stand this administration. Like, every fucking one of them. I can't... They're so horrible. It's horrible. On every, it's horrible. In every fucking level, you know? Um, now, I'm sure there's a bunch of different political views on the set of Roseanne. <laughs> I knew this pandemic. No, I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna, gonna go point. I'm not gonna go in the way you think like everyone else goes. But chemtrails, chemtrails, chemtrails. Th- what are you talking about? She really believes in chemtrails. It's all she talks about. Oh yes. Roseanne, okay. Come on. Um, oh, oh, me. <laughs> you know so do you have to like be a closeted you know, liberal or Democrat, like, do you just not go there? Like, like, what's the feeling? <laughs> Anything but be myself is what I'm trying to do here. <laughs> um, no, I actually, I wrote an article for um, Dame Magazine. Which Dame? Is a feminist, D-A-M-E yeah. Magazine, yes. which is an online magazine. And it's, I talk about, it's called like Reckoning with My TV Mom. Right. And I talk about how, you know, because people kind of, we're in like this soundbite society where you just, you know, oh, 
she said this, let's run with it. Right, and right. She, that's her beliefs. So I wanted to actually articulate the bigger picture of how I feel about her political views, how I feel about her, how it's conflicting for me, how I grapple with it. And so it's out there. If you're Dame. interested, <laughs> dame.com. Mm -hmm. But yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's um, it's hard. You know, I I bought this T-shirt that's like an R. Crumb shirt that, and I I bought it while I was in L.A. shooting the show, and it says it says women who vote for Trump, and it's just one of his like voluptuous right. tr um, crumb women just punching right. herself in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a great shirt. And I was like, oh, this is so good, you know. And then I was like, I guess I can't wear this to work. Uh, right. You know? Do you feel like you can't really be? No, no, I think I can totally be. I mean, frankly, we don't really talk about that too much on right. set. I mean, we're too busy talking about the show and, you know, wisecracking. We don't really go into right. politics. I mean, the it's writing. understood. It's understood. Now, you got a lot of the old writers back, right? Some of them, yeah, right. yeah. And it's like the same, I, it's really amazing how it's sort of the same cadence, They're, the characters are still strong. I love, who thought of um, you being the surrogate thing? Because that's a brilliant way of bringing her back. The, Sarah Clark talk. talk. <laughs> I don't know which writer came up with that or whatever, but I thought it was pretty clever. And Tuesday night, um, is kind of Becky's big episode, and it's yeah. it's really, really, it's, you know, I, I opened the script, I, I tried not to open the script on Friday night, because it was like, we're done with the show, the audience is clapping, you know, we right. finally got through it, and then, you know, you're walking out to go home, and they hand you the next script, right, right, you're right. like, oh, great, work. <laughs> So I would just try not to crack it open until a Saturday morning, but I would wake up and just lean over and there it was and crack it open right. and you know, kind of devour it. And it was, this episode was so, so funny. It is so you, and funny. Your storyline is so, it's the most interesting out of you all. You think? Of yes, absolutely. Don't you guys it think so? Of, yeah, it has Have been. Have you guys I, seen the show? Have you watched the show? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. But they, they don't want, listen to my show, so that's fucking great. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. They're like, um, no, we didn't, you yeah. Trump supporter. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> so can you tell, I mean, because a lot of people don't know how it works with it. I mean, first of all, traditional sitcoms, they say, are going away. And this is... Yeah. I think it's like a good sign that perhaps they might be not going away. I, it's weird because I don't want to be partial to right. the show that I spent, you know, years of my childhood, right? You know, devoted to. But just when I see, you know, a little image of it on TV, I just feel better. I don't know why. I feel like it's it's so grounded, right? And it's not just you know some of these sitcoms. You're just like, w is this real? I mean, it's so fluffy. Yeah. And um, I just I like that edge that our show brings and that that heart and this right. this struggle. And, and also, it's like y you said something about how if it hadn't been around before, it would never. Like, if it was a new show, like, if they, if they were pitching this now without a history, it probably would never get made, you know? Like, if they were, if the Connors weren't around before, right? you know? Well, it's not really in vogue to be, right. you know, socioeconomically challenged. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, my son, Ben, um, is... Now in this phase where he's like on Netflix and he's watching Friends. Like we watched an episode of Friends last night. And the whole time I'm watching it, I'm like, Ben, no one has a cell phone. No one has a cell phone. No one has a cell phone. <laughs> and I remember that show used to fucking annoy me so much because I was like, how do they, their apartment is so much nicer than mine, you know? And they're like young and, you know. And it's interesting that, the, like, I really, I don't know, but I think there might be some sort of renaissance of... The three camera, or the, the four, four, camera. four camera. Shut the fuck up, Judy. Um, <laughs> so tell everyone. A lot of people don't know what it's like to be on a sitcom. The week of work, and it's it's kind of interesting. So you get there Monday. Do you shoot on Friday night? Yeah. Okay. So Monday morning you get so there. So one thing just to say that going back to it, I just I was 
totally over. I thought, oh my gosh, as a kid, I did this. Right. And we did. We did nine episodes this last go around. We used to do 22 or yes, something. Yes, that was a season. Yeah. Which yeah. is so much work. But um, so we get to the set on Monday morning. We do a table read of the script. And then Wait, can like, I do? What, oh, can I do interject a little? Yeah, yeah. So when they do a table read of the script, the person, the writers, always over laugh at their oh. jokes <laughs> so that they don't get eliminated from the script. So like, I swear to God, it's, it's so, so over the top. It's so true. It's like, like so you're, you're so funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey Becky, I can't believe you. You're wearing those boots. <laughs> And you hear some fucking writer like, yeah, that's funny. It's so annoying. Okay. Oh, so that's true. Cute. That's it's so, cute. It's so, all right, yeah. So you do the so table we read. So do the table read, and then we do, we start rehearsing the scenes. And then... Um, you take a break. We take a, you mean in between. Yeah, yeah, you take yeah, a break. Between, and then the writers the go table. back to the... So you're rehearsing, and the writers are in the room going, that joke worked, that joke worked, that right, one didn't right, work, right. you know. And then, so then you return the next day, and then everything has changed. Right. Even though you've started rehearsing the, So yeah. it's like, don't bother even, I mean, there was, I guess I was like earnest at first, and I'm like, I'm going to memorize my lines. <laughs> and then the uh, next day. You're such a New York theater yeah. girl. Well, yeah, because I used to be able to have like three weeks to memorize. Right, right. And now my brain, you know, they say like, you know, you don't want Alzheimer's. Like, open up new neuro neuro pathways. <laughs> you know, like my neuro pathways were just like, what? Yeah. You know, because <laughs> everything was totally different every day, and that right. happened. So we rehearsed on Tuesday, Wednesday. Everything had changed, pretty much. Right. Mm. So th that means if the if the script changes, that means the blocking's changed. That means plot has changed. So it's just kind of like. It's very zen, I guess. It's and kind the of like writers slipping are, through yeah. your fingers. The writers are there all hours. Uh, all hour, all night. And also... Um, Would you affect the you writing? Because when they're there late, then you get stuff you're like... You know, it's like, what are you... <laughs> yeah, right. Is this English? Yeah, because you guys were late. Because yeah. they was like, whatever, this joke's yeah. funny. <laughs> uh, now, do... Um, I remember when I was on a series uh, for that short period of time... Um, they used to drop, deliver the script. Like they would, do, so now do they email it or do they deliver a, a tangible script? They, they just wait till the morning. Wow. Well, because it's gonna change, you right. know? And then, so then on Thursday the cameras come in and so they do, so we're rehearsing with cameras. So, which means instead of being like, you know, 70 people on set, there's like 207. It just feels like, a ton of people, and then everything changes. Yeah, because they stop, start, stop, start, because they're like With the picking lighting. the camera angles for the four cameras. As I mentioned, there's four cameras. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> and then so the next day we rehearse. We either just rehearse during the day. Sometimes we kind of tape the show and each scene to kind of get it down, so we have something that's solid for them to edit with. But sometimes we had three different directors, and one of the directors was like, nope, we don't need anything solid and taped. We'll just, just do the audience, right. which is great when everything is changed and you're still trying to memorize those lines, right. and then the audience are there all of a sudden, and then you're on, and then right. it's like, and cue, and right. you're like, I'm uh, supposed to say something right now that uh, I don't know what the line is. Right. <laughs> and they don't have cue cards or anything. You can't call so. for line. Oh, no. Do you know why? Um, I was doing Melissa and Joey on the Disney Channel with Melissa Joan Hart, you know? Woo! And I played and in- Joey Lawrence. He's so Joey. Oh, Joey Lawrence, yeah. And so, um, I, because it's so nerve wracking, because once the audience gets there, you're like, ner you're like, oh my God, fuck, there's real people here, and then they're going to react, and I have to hold, and you know, so um, I was doing, I don't know, I was doing my, I screwed up my line, and I was like, fuck, and <laughs> it was the Disney Channel, so I was like, oh my, and then the director came over, and it was like, I'm like, oh my God, I'm never getting a good job again. Like, every time someone says something to you, you're like, I'm never working again. Oh my God, they're going to blackball me. And I was so, I was like, so mad at myself, but it's nerve wracking. You're in front it's of a line. So, well, what's, you know, the consolation to me is that I'm working with like, you know, these 
kind of half-ass actors, John Goodman and Laurie Metcalf. Right, you know? right, yeah, right, they right. suck. And when I see them, and I see them with their scripts and pacing and whatever, I'm like, okay, if they're going through this, I'm in great company. Right. And it's funny because, like, that, you know, coming back as an adult, well, in quotes. Yeah. Um, when I was a kid, I was always like, I can't let anyone know that I'm having this struggle because I'm a teenager right. and I just am going to act cool. And then now as an adult, I can say like, oh my God, this is so hard, Lori, or right. this sucks, John, or something like right. that. And it just feels great to feel like, you know. Like you're not more, alone. Yeah, exactly. And that they're, they've they always probably been totally open to that. Right. It's just I was just in my stubborn teen mode. Right, right. You know. Mm. Now, um, I've grown soft in my old age. <laughs> Did you, what is the, is, are there a lot of big egos? Um, in okay, a way, a but not really. All right. No, the thing is, is that honestly, like back in the day, it was like really, there was, and this has probably contributed to my right. teen angst or whatever was going on, but like there was, the set was very tense. Right. I mean, there was a lot of During people, the Tom Arnold era. Oh, particularly yes. then. Yes. I mean, he just, every time he came on set, it was just like this. Satan. It was like Wiley Coyote right, or something right, like right. that. You know, he'd like spin in and. Right. But um, yeah, so to see everyone kind of chill out and you know, still be neurotic, but be more mellow and, you know, seasoned with age. Right. Has, has just been so great. All the people that aren't back on the show, I feel such regret because I feel like I wish they could see that this is the way it always should have been. Mm. Right, right, right. You know? Now, Michael Fishman. Yes. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Is he, he plays DJ. He plays DJ. <laughs> I find him fascinating, okay? <laughs> because he um, he grew up on that show. Yeah. And, that, and he's... Poor guy. Oh, by the way. Oh, yeah, Jew. Fishman. Um, Jew, Yes. But then I did, he got married, like, at, like, 14, right? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. He married his, his uh, little brother's kindergarten teacher I believe no way I yeah I think so older than him um was she older than yeah him? not really I don't All right. think okay but yeah he got married really young he has two grown I mean his kids are going to college no way how old is yeah. he he's like 30 and his kids are in college I know well he's like he's I don't know exactly how did old he, he is, do but... like what did people do in between, like, did he? Because I don't remember him acting. Did he just live <laughs> off of? Ever? <laughs> he's um, joking. I'm I sorry. don't. I mean, I know he's had like a bunch of kind of odd jobs. I think he's like done some editing. I'm not really sure what he was doing all that time besides being a dad and being right. a like, baseball coach to his kids. And he's not a big actor. I read. He's not like he's not really an actor. He's like right. I was born into this and this is fun for me, but I, this is not like my jam, jam, jamity jam. Right. Um, I, why can't like <laughs> this is like all right? I'm gonna be such an asshole now. Like why can't I get like he doesn't even fucking care and he has this job. You know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, I need a gig. I have no work in July. Like, I can't. I just don't. Th <laughs> Why? God, please. It's so funny. <laughs> what? Because I, I see you doing these, like, fucking, like, you're in every single show I've ever watched, I right. think. But I get, like, a $1.17 residual. Yeah. I'm literally <laughs> sag after, by the way. They I got an eight cent one the other day. You did? <laughs> yes. I was like, don't Good spend it on Did you ones. know? I don't know if there's any actors. In, all right. So SAG AFTRA, if you go on the website, they have this thing called Residual Tracker now, <laughs> which is the worst. It used to be like you'd be home and you'd get the mail and you'd be like, oh, I got a hundred bucks. Now you can check to see what's on its way. And, and you don't I'm obsess over that at all. <laughs> fucking day, okay? I used to weigh myself every day and then I got rid of my scale and now I check residual tracker <laughs> every fucking day. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I would take that away from you. <laughs> if I didn't need the money, I wouldn't be checking but then, residual. But you it's not they, did it. money. they did it, they're like, so it's today, right? right. And they'll say like, the check is coming on April 20th. Right, right. And you're like, April 20th? That's right. like in two weeks. Right, right. Why does it take you that? Why are you posting? Right. Like, is it like the slowest person, like, putting 
the check in the envelope. <laughs> and then someone Closing else licks the stamp. The yeah. Oh, well, they no, don't we lick gotta stamps wait for that one guy to lick the envelope, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, don't yeah, I know, and they have cuts. in processing. I'm like, oh, please let there be, and they're always like five dollars and seventy one cents. And I'm like, fuck. Okay, I'm still doing gigs for free. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just so annoying. Um, so uh, we have some games that we wanted to play. Um, and since, you know, the, um, you know, we call the show Kill Me Now because uh, we always like to ask our guests what pisses them off. What has been really pissing you off lately? Um, oh, where do I start? Oh, my God. <laughs> you know what, one thing, I just... I feel like people are more uptight lately. Oh my God, so uptight. much. I feel like so people much. don't have a sense of humor oh anymore. God, yes. I mean, why is everyone so, I mean, here's the thing that's really frightening to me, people. I'm, I'm a liberal, but I'm reading things that liberals are writing and I'm thinking, what mm. are they talking about? Right, I know. That it's is true. Getting, oh, well, this is normalizing Trump. This is normalized. I'm like, normalizing? Is it not normal that I see him on the news every day? Right, exactly. What does that mean? Right. You know, like these terms, and it's like, and then I start to feel the discomfort, like, am I going to the other side? I know. Yes. But I know I'm not. I know I'm not. But there's that feeling because you just think, this is, these people, I'm supposed to be like a riot girl, like cheering with these people. Right. I'm supposed to be like pumping my fist with like my reproductive rights hat right, right. every day pussy when hat. I read my pussy hat, exactly. Every single day. And then why? Do you know what I mean? I, it's, first of all, the right has no sense of humor. Like they have, they None. take themselves so fucking seriously. You can't even, like as a comic, you make a Trump joke in front of a Trump supporter, that's it. They're fucking pissed off, they won't laugh for the rest of the show. You know, like even he has no sense of humor. Like he goes on SNL and you know, he's not even fucking funny on SNL <laughs> and then he gets mad. Like if someone imitated me, on an SNL, that oh, would be, be like, great. oh my God, the greatest thing in the world. He gets fucking pissed off. All right. But I totally understand. And, you know, Hennessy came to my show last night, and this whole fucking, <laughs> I feel unsafe. <laughs> I am triggered. I'm triggered. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> what happened to have, you not say I'm to have triggered feelings or feel wanna... like, you know, like, it's like, she, she triggered me. <laughs> yeah, I feel you know, uncomfortable. Yeah. I feel uncomfortable. That's, right sorry, now. that's how life is. It's fucking uncomfortable. I can't take it. And then it also makes me feel like, it ch it's challenging, like, freedom of speech. Right, I know. Like, I, the know, things that we're not allowed to say. Right. I can't even say tranny anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Can you not say tranny? No, I can't. My tranny friends don't let me. You're kidding me. Is that true? Just some of them. I don't hang out with it's them so as much. It's so annoying. Like, get over that bull. It's, like, so minutia with the fucking, you know. But it's also, like, this pomposity. Like, well, in our country, we have freedom of speech unlike other countries and it's like but don't say that right yeah Why are we still yes, exactly can I, may, I, we have may I come in a moment in this yes all right, so I want to know why all these things we can't say anymore, right? And we're taking them out of the... And you know what? Yeah, they maybe are a little childish, like retarded. Maybe we should, like, okay, except in music, right? When you have, like, a retard or something. But, uh, but like, why, do, why haven't we taken away hysterical yet? Hysterical? Can you riddle me this? Why is, why is hysterical a fucking thing? You know? By the... Like... The, you mean mental no illness hysterical? Like anything hysterical. Like doesn't that come from, doesn't that just mean like crazy woman, basically? Do you right? know okay. Like hyst hysterectomy. Down with Freud. Yeah. Down with Freud. That's true. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, okay, that's If we're getting rid line. of all the words, I want to get rid of hysterical. Woman power. Ally. Have we also uh, seen how Hennessy took this conversation and made it about me <laughs> to a level where no one fucking understands <laughs> about the word hysterical? Okay. All right. All right so like, the history. Use the word hysterical. Like if I see something funny, I'm like that was hysterical. Exactly. But but that the the historical connotation of the word hysterical right. comes from women being crazy because they have histos. 
Okay, I honestly um, <laughs> that actually I'm came looking for from a new I don't know if anybody holding auditions right after. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I well, retarded didn't even start as a, th- but that started as a. Have nobody? you? Here's the other thing. I have, I have lost. Like, there's people I won't. I can't deal with any. Like, I don't. I've lost friends because of the fucking, you know. Me too. Overly sensitive lefty left men from Leftsville, Long Island. Like, the, I can't, like, it's like there's, everything is not perfect, you know? And there, are, I don't, I just, it's so, it's weird doing stand-up, you know? Yeah. I just did this thing for Vice TV. They're, they're doing a thing on, you know, colleges and the politically correct stuff. So apparently now at colleges when a co- comedian goes the bookers at the for the college tell the comedians what jokes they can do and what they can't no. do and what words they can say and what they can't yes i'm telling you because it'll trigger it's like fuck you i got called bigfoot and sasquatch every day in school okay and i'm fine all right and, it's like and- <laughs> You've gotten some more, you know. I I got Orca. You got Dyke. I mean, you've lived as a lesbian in the early 90s. Right. I just, I don't, it's like, what's happening? Everyone's like a little... But that's a good point. Like, I thought it was just, you know, the PC 90s when right. I was in college that right. that shit was going on. But it was like, you know, they had the African American place and they had the Asian American right. studies place. And, and I'm like, where is this sitcom girl place? Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Because, right. like, everyone was like, oh, there's Becky, Becky, you know, oh, you know, you're here for the wrong reasons. You what? must be stupid. Did you're you just not know famous. how to get to the drama room? What's that? Did you not know how to get to the drama room? I did, but I've never been like a drama major. Yeah, I don't like when you, you were at like Vassar, that's like, uh, like you know? when you were at Vassar, did you take any acting classes or anything? Um, I failed acting. Yeah, you did. That was one of the classes I failed. Yeah. <laughs> Real and actors. Sorry, why course. did you fail acting? Well, I showed up to class and they were like, "What's your animal?" You know. And I, was <laughs> like, I can't. I was like, "I've been, I've been in the business for five years already." <laughs> yeah. You know, like I just didn't want to do that. Right, and then it was right. like, "Oh look, Becky's a giraffe." You know, look at Becky. Is that She's your animal a squirrel now? Right. You know. And so I just felt, but I did a lot of theater. I was like. Did a ton of theater at school, right. so I would pick koala bear for you or some sort of marsupial. <laughs> oh my God, you're so getting on my nerves. Um, <laughs> all right, do we want to do a little uh, a game? Let's do a game. Okay. So we have two games. Well, we have one. We're, we're gonna actually. Uh, I, I got, we we have one game, and then we're gonna ask the audience if they had any yeah, questions. Yeah, we were gonna ask if you have any questions, Which is and never if you have any good awkward. kill me now moments. Um, but we have a game. Does don't you think we should get contestants? Yeah. Um, who wants to be a contestant? Where I no, can't see anything. This, this okay, whoever that person that said woo, come down here, please. Chenda, come on down. Oh, Chenda. They said Chenda. Yeah. Yay, Chenda. This is like she wife, should, Chenda. She should probably read the questions because she's going to know all the answers. All right, Chenda, you can read the question. I want to read the question. You read the questions. Hi, you're the host. Hi. How are okay, you? no one else wants to participate? Oh, oh okay. my God. This is, a Ro- this is a Roseanne trivia game. It's a Roseanne trivia game. Okay, oh, yes. Oh, okay, okay. Right here in the front. Awesome. Okay. All right, Chemda. And what's your name? Robin. Robin. What, what, what do we have for Robin if she wins? Um, you, can, yeah. you can kiss any oh, yeah. person on this yeah, panel yeah, let's right give, now. Let's right. give away the Jubel. But I need a new bell then. I got you. All right. All right, Robin, you get the Jew bell. Are you Jewish, you Robin? Robin? No, no, you're not Jewish. Look at that face. All okay. right, and Robin, what do you do for a living? I cook. You're a, co- you're a chef? I cook. She's a baker? Oh, yeah. Oh, my mom oh, is my a baker. Oh, my God. Like, what's your specialty? She's a chemist, basically. Yeah. Cake. Ooh, yes, cake. Like nice. birthday cakes or? Yes. I'm going to hire you, you to make Shut you up! <laughs> Do you work at a at a place or from home or from home. you do? And you sell do you sell online or no, you come to my house and ask me for something and I make it. Um, okay, so what's the weirdest thing anyone has asked you for? Like would that be a gay wedding cake? If someone <laughs> came to you 
Ed said, I'm, we're, get, we're gay and we're getting married. Would you make the wedding cake? Of course I would. Okay, thank you very much. We love you, Robin. <laughs> now, what's the weirdest cake you've ever made? The weirdest cake I've made, um, my daughter's last birthday, it, I, I actually carved out a piece of blue um, fondant and it got weirder and weirder until it looked like Trump. Oh, uh, and so I squeezed out. I put but he's some, orange. So did you put any? Um, <laughs> he had orange hair. Okay, good. He had orange hair that I squeezed out through a garlic press, and I just put put it just so. Is she a Trump supporter? Your daughter? No. All right, good. No. Um, I, I really don't know how you deal with that. I don't. What's the cake supposed to be. <laughs> It came out looking like Trump. But we'll You're not doing good, good for your business here, Robin. Okay. Daughter, but yeah. somehow it wound up. It was supposed to be my daughter. And it, and it came out daughter. like Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, I would fucking hate you if, uh, if, all right. Anyway. All right. Robin and, and Chemda. Shut up! This cake isn't. VP. Chemda, do you see the annoyance that I, all right. Uh, Chemda, you're the other contestant. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Chemda has one of the original and greatest uh, podcasts. She is a founding member of podcast of every, I mean, everyone literally went to Chemda when they wanted to start a podcast, and she helped them all, and Mark Maron. And then um, <laughs> they don't give back, Mark Maron. So, um, <laughs> ding. <laughs> uh, so Chemda is host of Keith and the Girl. Um, and uh, they're she's celebrating uh, their 13 year anniversary. 13 years they've been doing that podcast. 13. So you have to have a bar mitzvah. Yeah. All right. Uh, can I get an Aaliyah? Oh yeah. Wait. Sorry. I'm I'm like really bad on the Jubal. All right. Okay. <laughs> Wait. They need a bell to um. Oh yeah. You just. All right. So. Don't don't look. Oh. I'm not playing though, right? Yeah. You're if oh I would okay. You know the answer. Okay. We're making this up on the fly, folks. All right. Now, uh, how do we know? You have to make a noise, I guess, because we don't have buzzers. Oh, we have the bell, mother. I know. All right, but you have to put it in between yeah. them. Oh, because you can't reach over and get it. Okay. I was trying to be respectful. All right, ready? So Hennessy's gonna hold the bell. And we don't win this shit out of this. Okay, ready? Spoiler alert. Okay. All right, ready? Yeah. Ready. Who, and then we're gonna, all right, whatever. Who, who was originally supposed to play DJ on Roseanne? A, Leonardo DiCaprio. Leonardo DiCaprio. I didn't ask all the fucking questions. Thanks, yeah. Like okay, like no. I, like I have to ask all the, do the things, and then you can ring the bell. It's not like family fucking feud, all right? <laughs> All right, Leon A, Leonardo DiCaprio, B, Kirk Christian Cameron, fucking hates the gays, C, Jonathan Taylor Thomas, or D, Macaulay Culkin? Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> uh, Chemda, do you have an answer? You have to buzz in. Ah, the Macaulay Culkin? You're a winner! Ding, 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 ding. Did you know that? I did. You did know that. I did. Um, and what happened? What, what's the story behind that? I don't know. I mean, I guess they had Michael auditioning like a million times right. after they fired the first kid. Right. Um, do you remember the first kid? Yeah, Sal Barone. Is I that do. his real name? Yeah, yeah. Apparently he's doing all right, but... Right. I mean, uh, to be that young and get rejected like that, you know what I mean? Isn't it terrible? Yeah, it's so fucking showbiz. All right. At least Mulcahy Culkin also got rejected. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. That's, That's horrible. True. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, he's had, he has no money. All right, so um, he doesn't fucking check SAG after residual <laughs> tracker, okay? All right. Yeah, that's true. All right, ready? You sold pot to him once? It was his. Yeah, yeah, I know who we were talking oh, about. Was and yeah, it was like 10 you, years where ago. was it? It was uh, on a set. It was actually at a party of Saved, the movie Saved. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. It's really? Fun. Yeah, it's fun. It's great. That's great. Thanks so much. <laughs> That's exactly. Yeah. Uh, on an episode entitled Valentine's Day, 
In which place did guest star Judy Gold Woo! work? At, oh no, you gotta wait! But I know it. Robin, you have to let me do oh, all the things. Okay. A, big and tall chocolate shop. <laughs> B, plus size lingerie shop. C, lover's lane comedy shop. Or D, in the closet bra shop. Robin. Plus size lingerie shop. That's correct, Robin has one! Did you know that? I know those are. I, no, no. You didn't know that? I didn't. Yeah, I was on, I put, you it was think about that every it, time? <laughs> every night. Thank you. Um, I was on 1990. Uh, Tom Arnold was there, and he was always grinding his teeth because he was doing drugs. And um, uh, Dan came to buy Roseanne some lingerie for Valentine's Day, and I worked at the Big and Tall lingerie shop. And, and that was my first time ever on a set. I was there. Yeah. And wow. it was my first time ever on a set. And, and, uh, and what was that like for you? I was like freaking the fuck out. Because it was like my first time out in L.A. Um, it, it was, I, I was 28, I think. I had been doing stand-up. I had a spit curl. You had and, two. No, I only had one. Oh, okay. <sighs> <laughs> um, and I remember... Got walking in and I saw the quilt and I was like, oh my God, but I tried to act like I didn't give a shit. You know what I mean? But I that was like it. Smell it. What? I would go up and bury my face in it. Again, auditions for a new co-host. Uh, oh, and a bright in about 15 minutes. Okay, anyway. What was supposed to be the original name of Roseanne? A, The Connors. B, Life and Stuff. C, Rosie, or D, Dan and Roseanne? Chemda. I just want to say, these are so hard. Um, I, I want to say the Connors because that was very much what sitcoms were. Right, like. yeah. Jefferson. Right. The whoever. Right, and the Jeffersons was in the 70s. Okay, so <laughs> on that one, go ahead, Robin. Do you want to take a gander? A, the Connor, well, it's not A, B, Life and Stuff, C, Rosie, or D, Dan and Roseanne? D, Dan and Roseanne. Eh. Okay, Lacey. Lacey. The correct Lacey. answer is Life and Stuff. Wow. Yes. And you are the worst fucking special, audience. Okay. Special bonus question. Yes, go. What was Becky's name before it was Becky in, oh. in the pilot called Life and Stuff? Ooh. I don't know. Oh. I guess Emily. And, okay, Robin. I know Ivanka. Correct. Uh, I got no laugh on Ivanka. <laughs> you people are the worst. Go ahead. The correct answer is Jenny. No way. Yeah. Why did they change it? I think because that's Roseanne's actual daughter's name. Do they get along? Yeah. She loves her kids. She yeah. has great relationships. I oh. mean. You know, she's Roseanne, right. so she's yeah. a pain in everybody's ass. Right, but... but. For sure, for sure. Okay. Wait, <laughs> did she, when after Trump called her, did she say anything about it to anyone? I don't know. Ugh. I mean, she probably knows better than to call out, like, me or Sarah Gilbert right. and say, guess what? <laughs> right. Okay. Which food item is mentioned or shown on 99% of Roseanne episodes? I a. Say meatloaf, but I know Wait, what the fuck? All right, I, we need two new contestants. <laughs> two new contestants. All right. Which food item is mentioned or shown on 99% of Roseanne episodes? A. Frosted flakes. B. Spaghettios. C. Corn. Or D. Beans. Frosted flakes. What? Robin? Really? Yeah. Corn. Corn, yes, Robin, got it! Corn. Good job, Robin. Frosted flakes. That's good. Wait, what's Robin. the score? Does anyone know? Robin is winning. What? Two to one and one question in the toilet. All right, okay. Robin. Thank you. Is that your husband, Robin? He's my boyfriend. Really? Nice, nice. <laughs> really? And what are you, are you a baker as well? No, I'm an eater. He's a candy You're an eater. Nice. Okay, that's a good combination, baker and eater. 
And, and congratulations that he's an eater. <laughs> All right. All right. And you know what's going to happen tonight. Remember she said you're an eater. You owe me. All right. Okay. What does DJ stand for? A, Dan Jr. B, Darlene Jackie. C, Davy Jones. Or D, David Jacob. David Jacob. What? Yes, she is correct. Ding, 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 ding. How did you know that? Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Junior, right? That was my idea. I wrote that one. All right. That's you with your face. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> ready? That's Jewish, right? All right. Later, in some episodes later, um, the parents actually call him David Jacob. He might have been in trouble, but. Oh. God wow. damn it, Chemda. Oh. oh. Chemda. She's, look, she's trying to win. Oh, I, was try, I went to go play, press the Jew bell because I said Chemda, and then, all right. Which lesbian actor from Roseanne. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Which lesbo actor from Roseanne did Hennessy date for three years? What? Oh, wait, Hemda, you can't answer this one. We need another contestant. Hey. This one. This one. Hey. What's your name? Linda. 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 Welcome, Linda. What do you do? I'm retired at the moment. For, at the moment? So you plan on getting out of retirement? <laughs> and what did you do before you were retired? <laughs> oh, you did? Do you like it? Yeah. It's a, an adjustment? Doing this in Virginia. Right, I know. What would you be doing in Virginia right now? You, would you be at a Trump rally or anything? Or <laughs> shooting your guns? Or... Living in a very small town. Right. Is it, so it's a culture shock. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We're happy to have. Well, thank you. Where do you live in New York? In Stuyvesant County. Wow, you got, a, got an apartment in Stuyvesant? How the fuck did you get? <laughs> I can't. My life sucks. You don't understand. How many bathrooms do you have? She's on a sitcom too, yeah. Judy. Yeah, I <laughs> How many bathrooms do you have? Oh, just one. All right, good. Phew. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. So you are now tied. Okay, you're tied. Uh, you're playing for Chemda because she's a cheater. Which lesbo actor from Roseanne did Hennessy, this is Hennessy, date for three years? A, Sarah Gilbert. B, Sandra Bernhardt. C, Judy Gold, or D, Heather Matarazzo? Sandra Bernhardt. Oh, thank you. Thank okay, you. Linda, would you like to ring the bell at all? I'm trying to remind it. Okay, so I'll say Judy Gold. No! Ew! Oh, no! No! Go back to fucking Virginia. It's for lovers. Virginia's for lovers. <laughs> That's right. It is. Why don't you tell them? Get away from Judy me. Judy Gold. No, it isn't. It's Heather Matarazzo. Who is she? I don't know either. She, did anyone ever see Welcome to the Dollhouse? The movie? She That's... was DJ's girlfriend in the last uh, season. So, yeah. The other one. That could okay. Be We're on the final. <laughs> the final. Um... Uh, tie question. Tiebreaker. Yep, it is tied. It is a tiebreaker. So either Chemda or Linda can play for Chemda's team. Uh, and Chemda has chosen Linda to play for her team. Robin, you're very good at this. Thank you. You're, mm hmm. You call her Rhonda? Okay. I, did I say Rhonda? It sounded like it. Robin. Did I say Robin? You said Robin. Oh. Shut up! I'm so sorry. <laughs> Troublemaker. Okay. <laughs> How many of Roseanne's real husbands made an appearance on the original show? And One. took half her money. <laughs> <laughs> One, A, one, B, two, C, three, or D, seven? Go. Two. Uh, so that would be B, two? The, yes. That would be an incorrect response. And Tiebreaker, go ahead. <laughs> Do you know how many? I mean, I can see that it says three circled. Right. <laughs> um, 
First of all, she's only been married three times. Uh, Tom Arnold, Bill Pentland, and Ben Thomas. Did they all, they all made an appearance on the show? I don't remember um, the latter, Bill because Tom, I, I don't Tom. think I was there when he oh, was right. on the show. Wow, that was a good question, Hennessy. But Bill um, Pentland helped create the show originally, right. so. So he's raking it in oh, right yeah. now. Probably. Why can't yeah. I get something like, <laughs> like why couldn't I think of fucking something up? I think uh, you should be back on our show. Right, so selling you lingerie. <laughs> I think Becky should get a boob job right. and then need new lingerie. Right, the right. Big and, you know? Well, no, because your tits are going to get bigger while you're pregnant. I mean, right, I got to get some surf. work done so people just say I don't look the same. Yeah, right. Yeah. I love it. All right, what, who wins? Uh, Robin is the winner. Um, Congratulate. What are we giving yeah, Robin? It's a tie. It's a tie. It was a tie. Oh, wow. Linda and Robin. Um, oh, and Hemda. Get off the right yeah. Um, thank you guys for playing. That was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> We're doing that more often. What? Robin answered the most questions, so we'll give her the Jew Bell at the end. Do you really want the bell at the end? You do? Okay, I'm gonna sign it for you. Mm. I'll say it too. She's like, no, don't, yeah, don't no. ruin the value. Okay. Um, we wanted to, uh, since it's our, it's really our first, well, it's our second live show, but this is our first like live show where they actually have recording equipment and good sound system. So, um, does anyone, uh, how many people actually listen to the pot? Oh, yay! I love you all! Yes. Does anyone, would anyone like to come up and share a Kill Me Now moment? Of their own? Of their own. Anything recently that happened that they wanted to fucking kill someone? We could come. All right, Hennessy's going to do the, you know, what's his name, Phil Donahue thing? That's I would be surprised if every single one of you wasn't bursting with wine. I know. I can't believe we found someone. All right. Um, I was recently in a bar, and I was overhearing people on a first Tinder date. And Ooh. a girl was sitting there and basically talking at the guy the entire time. And I heard her entire resume. Uh, I heard that her parents were virgins when they got married. Oh, my God. Uh, she has her own D and has a very light period flow. No way. No. This is a first date? Oh, my God. She talks about an IUD and light period flow on a first date. The gynecologist that she goes to is the one that delivered her. Oh, my God. It's a little weird for her. All right. That's very vagina-centric for a first date. All right. She was an actress who wanted to do voiceovers, but she had an agent on Navy 2. I'm not sure. Wow. <laughs> Wait, did he? You, you know what? Wait, so. My friends can vouch for it. Old thing down on Facebook and put it off all of my friends. Oh my god, did, did he? In real time, that's so good. Did they go on a second date? I have no idea. He paid for her drinks and walked her out, but she was going to dinner with her two friends, which she told him three times during the date. Okay, and what did he, what was he like? Did he say a fucking word? He didn't, and then he did at the end, and he was a Trump supporter. No way! <laughs> Oh, good. I hope. I wish she'll talk more about her fucking IUD. What? She tore him a new one. Oh, we love her. I don't know. Is that true? I don't. I almost bought him a drink because I felt so bad. No, he's a Trump supporter. He can fucking yeah. Wait. So how did she tear him a new one? Uh, she basically told him she knew all about the housing bubble, and then she said, "Well." Right. Wow. I love that. <laughs> so, do you talk to your father? It was her father. Oh, her father. All right. Oh, you're a very good actress. All right, whatever. Um, that was a good one. That was really good. What's your name? Melanie. Melanie, thank you for that. I really appreciate that. All right, anyone else? Anyone irritated? Oh my God, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> You got irritated face. <coughs> Hold on. Yeah, just too little. Yeah, too late. Not a story. Just two. Not a story. Just two words. Sinclair Broadcasting. Oh my God. <laughs> Are you fuck? Can you fucking believe? Do you guys know the Sinclair Broadcasting? 
that ev every newscaster from Sinclair was reading the same fucking pro-Trump story. I oh, hate right. them. How does she fucking, all right, I'm not gonna even ask you that. Um, that's the worst. Way to bring it down. Anyone else annoying? <laughs> oh, by the way, everyone, um, I have an IUD. I have an IUD, even though I'm 55, and I have a very light, actually, I have a non-existent period, so just want you all to know that. Okay. Uh, I'm a boy, and I still have my period. Yeah, okay. Uh, we have one more right over here. Yay. Okay. <laughs> this is typical, but I was on the train the other day, and there was a man spreader, and one knee was here, and the other one was, like, right here. Right. These are far apart, yeah. I was in a two-seater, and I was... So angry. Right. I almost want to start crying, but I just went. <sighs> and did he do anything? <sighs> no, nothing. So I don't. One knee was here, and the other one was like literally there. I don't know. What is that? What? All right, I need a guy here. What is that? Like, are your balls that fucking big <laughs> that you? <laughs> it's not the way the hips are. Okay. It's living like, a life of entitlement. Right, exactly. And taking up space, damn it. Yeah, that's it's also it. annoying. It's like, if I do this, no one's going to sit next to me, and I have an excuse because I have a dick and balls, so I'm just going to do that and hope no one sits next to me. You know what I do when that happens? I sit on their lap. You do? <laughs> oh, yeah, right on it. Oh, I, I'm sorry, was your leg on that? Thing? I really, do, I don't get so that. I don't get that at all. You only let me stay once. Wow. <laughs> By the way, I just took the subway down, and um, Ben took part the subway part way with me. And um, all of a sudden, he's standing and I'm sitting, right? And all of a sudden, I smell this fart, right? And so I look at him because it was definitely a gold-ish sort of <laughs> fart. And um, I, he has his headphones on, and I'm like, you fart. like I, with my face, and he went. And the guy, he made this smirky face, and the guy sitting next to me was like, like playing <gasps> video game. like, I don't know, he was like, he's playing video games, and all of a sudden he's like, he just starts going like this, <laughs> nodding his head back and forth, and looking at Ben, <laughs> Ben's six, seven, he's like this, looking up, and like, nodding back and forth, and it was the smelliest part. I was like, you're such an asshole, but yeah. <laughs> I think Linda's gonna move back to Virginia yeah. after this. <laughs> She's like, period flow. Yeah. <laughs> Is that your husband? <laughs> it is, now, what Lucky made you choose man. New York City? Yes, husband. Um, we've been coming here uh, for quite some time. And, right. Um, just, uh, I retired too. Right. We're just looking for adventure. I love that. That's so amazing. So you have like a whole new life. Yay, Good here's for you. Adventure. This is what life is all about, right there. What? Yes. I'll answer for you. Plus, we're Jewish. Yay! Oh my God! Yay. Linda, you do not seem Jewy at all. Oh, well, in Virginia. Yeah, because it's Virginia. You got uh, you got Gentiled in Virginia. All right. Have you guys been to Russ and Daughters yet? Yeah. Isn't it delicious? Oh, it's the best. <laughs> Okay. We got, we got is it working? Sorry. Yes. Is it working now? Yeah. Uh, we also moved here from South Carolina. I'm 65, so we reti I retired here. And the reason I did that, or we did it, is because I think New York is really uncomfortable. Uh, you need discomfort in your life to be happy. Right. Uh, I'm not Jewish. Uh. <laughs> But you have such a southern accent. <laughs> well, I have 4% of Jewish. You know that. Oh, you did your 23 and me? Yeah. yeah, me too. 97 fucking percent. Yeah. 4% is a part of 1% of Skinazi. Oh, wow. So anyway, so we need to go out because we did the suburbs before, and so like everything is like air conditioning. Right. Everything is comfortable. I teach in college for years and years. and. Everybody I was dealing with was like good looking, twitter. Right. So it was just horrible. I needed to go there. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. And I see the rats and the Right. Hammer, and the fat, disgusting food. people and the crack addicts, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Louis C.K. Can I say Louis C.K.? Yeah. No, you can't say Louis C.K. <laughs> he, um, he, uh, he was really funny talking about the rats and the sex. 
Yeah. yeah. In the traps. Right. You want like a portal seat, like, oh, give me a good gift. I want to look. So it's, it's cold, it's uncomfortable. Right. Um, a lot of EO now. Like yeah. Too. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, so you're happy you made this transition from South Carolina. All right, so he's a masochist. Which right, is yes. Well, that's great. That's I just fantastic. haven't heard the word Louis C.K. in I a know. long time. <laughs> yeah, Louis C.K. Oh, we just got the signal. We have to wrap it up. All right, okay. okay but, we got time for one more. Anyone, anyone else? What? Okay. Do we have anyone else? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. Who's your name? Michelle. So I'm a lawyer, and I do, I specific, I focus on the LGBT community. Yes. I do. All right, excellent. <laughs> and if one more fucking person tells me what restroom is the trans person going to use, I think I'm going to lose it. Ah, I love that. Anybody we want. Whichever one is the shortest. Wait, one. so like, what do they say? Oh, we, I, had, oh, I have more questions. <laughs> <laughs> so like what give me it like give me the most annoying example. Well maybe we should build another restroom. Maybe we should put a lock on the restroom. Right. Maybe I'm not gonna use the restroom. I'm gonna drive ten miles home each way so I don't have to be with that man. Right. In the restroom. And I'm like, it's not a fucking man. But okay, right. I'm gonna fucking assholes. It's annoying. I know. Like, well they're like, I have such a novel one for you. It's novel. I'm right. Like, really? Because I fucking do this every day. Yeah, you fucking it's asshole. Novel. And which restroom do you use on an airplane, you fucking asshole? Okay? That's everything that's wrong with this country. I know. And it's all really? Nice. It is. What, 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 like, it's and like, it's shit and pee. All right. <laughs> well, I know I like to go to the men's restroom and jerk off. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for bringing it down to a fucking shit level. Thank you so much. Listen, I, thank you to the New York uh, Podcast Festival. Lisa, I fucking love you. I, I want you on every episode. You I are you too. so smart and funny and talented, and I'm so happy. Like, I hate everyone that they get, like, second chances, but I'm happy for your... Um, second chances? You know, oh, my with God. With the money. Oh, with the money. Oh, I meant the, money. with the money second chances. <laughs> you know, that you get a second Ding. chance to fucking... <laughs> Second chance to not have to check the residual tracker, but um, I'm checking it too. Uh, yeah, but thank you all for coming, and as we always say, salam. Don't forget to tune in next week to Just Kill Me Now. Um, or, let's just kill me. Oh. Don't forget to turn uh, for part two on Just Kill Me. No, it's not. It's <laughs> just, just Kill Me. Now. No, no, Judy no. Gold's Just Kill Me. Just Kill Me Now. Just Kill Me Now. <laughs>